perhaps the biggest indicator of when an amazing reboot the 2017 DuckTales is, lies within its new rendition of the classic theme song, performed by Felicia Barden. both faithful to the original and its fans, yet self-aware enough to change just enough to engage modern audiences, emphasizing parts of the song that stuck with audiences, speeding the tune up just enough, all set to an opening literally consisting of comic book panels. Yep, I I'd say this is an accurate depiction of the reboot. Most of the time when a classic series is rebooted, it's just a shameless cash grab to bank on the rampant trend of revitalized nostalgia we see in time and time again over the last few years. Look no further than the infamous Teen Titans Go, which, while not totally awful, took its original and twisted it into something else so that hyperactive five-year-olds being babysat by Uncle Television, or I suppose nowadays Uncle iPad, would watch on repeat till Trigon brought about the end. 2017 DuckTales, however, has been lauded as perhaps one of the best, if not the best, reboots of series beloved by many. Today, we're going to be covering why that is and how other reboots can take notes to hopefully replicate the success. You know, at least till the nostalgia trend and another trend I'll mention later on inevitably die out. Produced by Walt Disney Television Animation, the original DuckTales ran from September 1987 to November 1990, producing 100 episodes and even a theatrical spin-off movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. Following the episodic adventures of richest billionaire in the world Scrooge McDuck and his three clones, uh, I mean triplet nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, the show enjoyed massive success, even resulting in the production of other cartoons such as Darkwing Duck, please god let that be the next reboot. Tailspin, and even a series for Chip and Dale. You know, those annoying chipmunks who keep nagging you about all the cool stuff your gummy ship can do, but you never really care about because the gummy ship is hell. What is this menu? Disney in the 80s had been trying to become supreme rulers of everything. Doesn't seem much else has changed. And that included the realm of television. And so they took the ultimate 80s risk. Making an animated series that wasn't just meant to sell toys. The 80s were a dark time, y'all. The series was actually inspired by several Donald Duck comics, in which Carl's Barks, an in-between animator for Disney, actually fleshed out his personality and character. No longer was Donald the lazy hot mess most of us know him for, specifically Kingdom Hearts fans. Just cuss here, you little- But now he was a brave adventurer with actual motivations and emotions. This is also where the black coat comes from, by the way. To say nothing else, the show wasn't afraid to do its own thing, and it succeeded because of that. I mean, what other kids show was willing to primarily star a crotchety old duck man who was greedy as all hell and conveyed that as a positive? It opened up so much more potential for animated series, and if not for DuckTales, perhaps we wouldn't have eventually found ourselves in the golden era of animation we are in today. So of course, it only makes sense that it's been rebooted to join the ranks of its successors, but unlike what recent trends might tell you, it's actually by far among the best series currently airing. How is that possible? Well, it's actually quite simple. When rebooting a classic series, in this instance an animated series, you'd best adhere to three golden rules. One, understand and clearly respect the spirit of the original, either remaining faithful to it, not meaning not changing anything, but rather keeping the spirit, the tone, meaning, etc. of the original intact, or subverting it in a clever and thoughtful way. Two, adapt the show to the zeitgeist without infringing upon its core identity. The modern insights, current worries, modern technology, current pop culture should be kept supplemental. Also be aware of dated tropes that could possibly be improved or parodied. And three, the most important one, don't shit on the original target audience, but also don't pander to them. Earn their trust and treat them respectfully, while also allowing new viewers to join in. Understand that this is not a battle of new versus old, but rather creating a bridge between the old and the new. The goal should be to expand your initial audience. And so, with all these things in mind, let's talk about what modern shows have done, and how DuckTales has followed these trends while remaining authentic to its original identity. The landscape for Western animation is constantly in flux, and in the last few years, it's been the thing for series to lean into more overarching stories across their episodes. Avatar The Last Airbender was the gold standard for a happy medium between episodic and serialized storytelling, and since then we've gotten even more series attempting a grand narrative, such as Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which I really need to check out if it's as good as I've heard, Steven Universe, which kinda tries, but mess. And Star vs. the Forces of Evil, which is my obsession. Even Tangled the series has created an overarching story about the origin of Rapunzel's hair. 
It's really good, by the way. You, you should check it out. Modern audiences also are much more sadistic. They just love to see their characters suffer as they develop, preferably developing PTSD in the process. It's really in. Older generations had alcoholism. We have shell shock. And debt, of course. Lots and lots of debt. We youngins lead miserable lives, hence why we love seeing our characters suffer. Stories that don't stray from darker themes, themes of genocide, prejudice, and trauma, those are stories we can get behind for their authenticity. Also, we're kinda screwed up in the head. That's not to say the show has to be incredibly dark and heavy, but a little bit of dark humor splashed in in there, it's appreciated. Tokens and bland characterization are also red flags for modern viewers. Where the original series struggled in this regard, wherein Webby was the token girl, having to represent an entire gender through stereotypes, while the triplets were treated like a hive mind to a degree, almost as disturbing as the Olsen twins. Come and play with us, Daddy. Thankfully, they fix these issues by giving each triplet his own set of goals and traits. Huey is obsessed with organization and is an incredibly huge nerd. Louis is lazy and will do whatever it takes to find a shortcut. They also signify this through him being the only triplet with Scrooge's ability to swim through gold and literally dive through it without dying. And Dewey craving constant attention as the middle child, always being forgotten, as well as the essential main character. Webby, meanwhile, is pretty much Duck Mabel. She's the granddaughter of a spy who's been sheltered most of her life. So while she kicks a lot of ass, she also struggles to pick up on a lot of social cues and values any potential friendship she comes across. I'm gonna eat a hamburger. We could bring you a hamburger. You really are my best friend. And last but not least, modern audiences love them some fourth wall breaking. Because of how saturated all forms of entertainment have become, even the most casual viewers is able to pick up on common cliches and tropes that have been done to high heaven. Hell, TV tropes is filled to the brim with I assume, literally every trope known to man. So how have we not gotten sick of all this yet? Well, the answer to that is, get meta. Meta text refers to commentary on the act of writing and storytelling within one's own writing, or commentary on another work. For the laymen, meta text is basically, wow, this is super cliche, but it looks like we're doing it anyway. Woo! -hoo! Given how familiar audiences are with all the used and abused tropes of storytelling, creators have begun a trend of using meta textual commentary to try and catch the audience's attention. Like, hey, we're smart. We know things, and we know you know things, but little do the creators realize that the audience knows the things that the writers know that the audience knows. You know, the whole trend of using meta commentary or meta humor has itself become stale. At this point, acknowledging tropes for lols has become just as trite and stale as trying to subvert the crap out of them without a second thought. One look at the live action Disney remakes of beloved animated classics reveals just how cynical and tired this kind of meta textual pandering can be. Like, yeah, you're aware that people are bitter about all the dead Disney moms or the logical fallacies and the goddamn fairy tales of all things. Lindsay Ellis kind of made that clear, and that's wonderful. Now tell me an actual story and quit trying to look smart already, you hacks. This is where DuckTales shows us how to properly use meta text, namely being aware of their audience's expectations and giving them something more. Never does the meta text get in the way of the actual story, but it is used to further engage the audience. There you have it. Reclusive adventure capitalist Scrooge McDuck is back with family in tow. DuckTales uses metatextual jokes and commentary to do things like further characterize the triplets, Facts comfort me when I'm nervous! and even take the occasional loving jab at the original. Until the 16th century sharks were referred to as sea dogs! We're all Dewey's brothers! For comedy, Who needs treasure when we've got each other? <laughs> Please, we're McDucks! And even to parody their own audience. Researching Mr. McDuck and his family is kind of my hobby. What? I mean, Webby in general is pretty much the audience surrogate. Let's take they even use it to make fun of broader storytelling tropes. Namely, Friendship is the greatest magic of all! Well, that's not how magic works. Of course, in that instance, they then promptly actually use the magic of friendship, but at least it was used for Lena's character and development instead of, I don't know, just advancing the plot in the most hollow and shallow way possible, like certain shows. This also could be argued to include Easter eggs referring to the original DuckTales, most notably that nod to Webby's original design in the other bin of Scrooge McDuck, as well as other classic animated series. The first that comes to mind is likely Darkwing Duck. To take your minds off our potentially grim fate, please enjoy another action-packed Darkwing Duck video. Oh god, I need that reboot next. Then there's also this little gem. Legend has it that the high priests of Castle Dunwin were mentored by mystical creatures from the nearby Glen. Gummy Bouncing here and there and everywhere. Those unaware, 
This is basically a reference to one of the older Disney animated series known as Gummy Bears, whose theme song I would say definitely rivals the DuckTales intro, though a reboot of that series would probably result in some kind of social divide between the bears who can jump and those who can't, or maybe some kind of gummy bear genocide. Low-key, of course, but it, it, it would definitely be there. Remember, new DuckTales give us. Let's take Though I definitely have to say the biggest missed opportunity to utilize this brand of meta humor was in the episode Sky Pirates in the Sky. He's the famous pirate captain, Don <laughs> Bernage! Ironically enough, despite the title itself being a meta joke, when the pirates board the Sun Chaser and sing, the heroes just kind of stand there and let it happen. They don't even joke about the song distracting them afterwards. Like, excuse me? This joke handed it. So, ugh, whatever. But perhaps if we want to see more reboots like this, more revitalized classics that actually manage to adapt to the modern landscape of entertainment, then maybe studios should take some notes from 2017 DuckTales and just follow these three core tenets. If you do these three things, then maybe, just maybe, your reboot won't be shit. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this video is not cursed like the DuckTales review. Speaking of which, if you haven't seen it, give it a try. A huge thank you to the patrons, I could not do any of this without you. If you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube hates creators. If you would like to further support the channel, you can join the lovely Patreon family, pick up some merch over on Teespring, and check out the links to my book, which is now releasing next year, in the description below. I'm the Unicorn of War, and this has been a shit show. Tell the staring